Hi everyone, uh, I'm Michael Rodman and I uh, want to welcome you again to the Child Psychology course. thought you might enjoy seeing me a little bit more live in this course uh, than uh, you may be used to in some online classes, so I'm trying out this new technology and we'll uh, attempt to uh, insert these kind of mini lectures uh, into our class every week. Uh, I've spoken to a number of you already by phone, which has been fun, and I've emailed all of you, uh, and I know you saw my picture in the faculty information portion of your online course, but this is me. Um, and uh, I hope to use these uh, taped mini lectures to highlight a few points in the chapters that you're reading, give you some ideas of what to look for, uh, and to uh, perhaps give you other examples uh, that may be useful that you hadn't found in your text. Also, I may try later on to uh, have you send in questions to me and do uh, some of these in the form of uh, responses to what you have asked about as you've been reading. But anyway, let's get started for today. First of all, I want to tell you about uh, the glitch that we had with uh, accessing the syllabus. Uh, for those of you who may not have tried it yet, uh, a version of the syllabus is available uh, in the discussion board, and if you click on that, uh, you'll be able to see a Word version of the syllabus itself. Uh, secondly, um, the bookstore now does have the versions of the textbook that include the access codes, and so you can purchase that if you haven't gotten a book yet, just purchase that from the bookstore, uh, and if you did purchase a book, you can call them up and they will be able to give you an access code. I should tell you that books with the access code cost about uh, $13.50 more than the book without it. So if you already have a text, you'll have to pay a little bit more again. If you want to call the bookstore on the weekend, they're open on Saturday between 9 in the morning and 1 in the afternoon, and their number is 781-276-4211 or if you're on campus other days of the week, you can just go by the bookstore on Monday or Tuesday and uh, get the right edition. I'm also teaching this class in an in-class version and they have another edition, another version of the book. So um, if there is a problem with those access codes when you try them, let me know. I've spoken to the publisher's rep and they assure me that uh, he assures me they will have this ironed out quickly. In any case, you can access all other parts of the course right now. So for example, if you click on the assignment part of the course on that button, you can see week one assignment, and I've gotten answers to questions already. And you can go to week two and visit the web links and other materials that uh, you will need to uh, use for each week of the course. So you can get started and get going on this course right now. Anyway, what I wanted to do in the next few minutes is just um, highlight a few things that you might be reading about in chapter one and um, give you some things to think about as you're doing that reading. Uh, most of you have had, uh, certainly you've had other psychology courses and in introduction to psychology you were uh, exposed to a variety of theories as well as practical information. Uh, but in chapter one, you'll see two things. In the second part of the assigned readings, there's a quick review of several of the theories that are used in child psychology. Names like Piaget and Erickson uh, will be familiar to you. Behaviorists like uh, B.F. Skinner, for example, uh, and Ivan Pavlov will be mentioned and they're familiar as well. But here's what I'd like you to focus on. In the first part of that chapter, your author talks about the question of nature versus nurture. It's an age-old question, a question um, in philosophy that goes back uh, at least uh, 2,500 years in one version or another. But the questions of looking at human nature and as children and trying to understand what's more important, nature or nurture, are particularly relevant. So here's a few things that I'd like you to focus on. I want you to notice that there are differences in theories that uh, emphasize uh, what's called discontinuous growth. That is, growth that occurs in stages that unfold in a sequence or order that's universal uh, to all children. These kinds of theories 
tend to emphasize nature. They emphasize the inherent biological processes that drive growth. Uh, theories like uh, uh, Freud, for example, or Erickson or Piaget, as stage theories, emphasize discontinuous growth. They suggest that people are different qualitatively in different stages. Uh, if you're in the stage of, as an infant of, as Erickson would call it, trust versus mistrust, you are a different kind of person than if you are, say, in the stage of initiative versus guilt, uh, preschool age kids. On the other hand, theories that emphasize the continuous nature of growth uh, emphasize the gradual accumulation of abilities and information primarily as a result of experience and practice. And these theories tend to uh, be primarily uh, in the school of learning theories. Uh, remember, learning theories define behavior as changes in what you were able to do that was the result of experience and practice, not the result of maturation. These questions come up continuously in child psych, and in your text, you'll see diff disagreeing views as to which is more important. I'll give you an example. Um, if you're talking about infants, uh, for instance, uh, and you're looking at um, personality, uh, some theorists would say that uh, uh, temperament is inborn and that your tendency to react to people and events in the world around you is the result of inherited characteristics. Uh, others of a more learning point of view might say that uh, the development of something as complex as your personality is the gradual effect of how a child is responded to and treated over a longer period of time. I'm not here to tell you right now which view is right or wrong, but rather that which view is emphasized uh, affects uh, primarily um, the solutions or the interventions that psychologists or other experts might recommend. Uh, for example, one of the strengths of stage theories is that they allow you to identify or define what is normal in the sense of what is typical of a child in a given stage or at a given age. And they further allow you to make reasonable uh, suggestions about what would be appropriate interventions given that child's stage or level of ability. Uh, learning theories, on the other hand, that emphasize a nurture might encourage other kinds of interventions uh, with a child to shape their behavior before more complex patterns and responses uh, to events uh, develop. Uh, so as you're reading in your text about continuous and discontinuous growth, about stage theories and uh, about learning theories, I'd like you to keep in mind uh, those differences in in emphasis. For yourselves, what you might find useful is to think about the ways you look at children and ask yourself which of those viewpoints underlies how you see kids. For example, do you think that athletic ability is innate and inborn, or is it the result of practice and modeling? Do you think that musical ability is innate or is it the result of having parents who play a musical instrument and being exposed to that in your environment? Um, what do you think about, uh, say, cognitive questions? For example, are children who are smart innately different in their intelligence? Or, for example, does their uh, difference in performance in school reflect better study habits or worse study habits? Uh, do, um, uh, do men and women gravitate towards different interests or different activities because of genetic distinctions of gender or because of learned or socialized expectations of what they're supposed to act like and what they're supposed to want to do? There's no right or wrong answer here. That's all I'm going to say for now. But the answer that makes sense for you reflects uh, perhaps even an unarticulated
tendency to see things as being more the result of nature or nurture. And that may affect, in turn, how you interact, whether it's with your own children or for those of you going into professions where you will work with kids, um, how you see kids and what they're capable of. So, uh, keep in mind, as I say, uh, the differences between nature and nurture, continuous and discontinuous growth. And what I expect for next week is that you will all have gotten the right text, uh, access the correct uh, unit one of the course, and be able to start taking a look at uh, the uh, websites and uh, be thinking about web papers as well. One last thing before I end today. Um, I have gotten responses to the week one questions from about a third of you in the class. Uh, but for those of you who have not yet answered those questions, they're fairly simple, you know, what elective credit does this course uh, meet, for example, would you please um, answer those questions and email them to me uh, so that I'll know that you are successfully in the course. And if I haven't heard from you by early next week, uh, I will probably send you an individual email to say, are you still taking this course or not? So I look forward to uh, uh, having you see me and me talk to you in this kind of format on a fairly regular basis throughout the semester. And uh, um, good luck with uh, child psychology.